Good morning and welcome to the Elgin County Council meeting for July the 25th, 2023. It is 9 a.m. and I will call this meeting to order. First order of business is the adoption of the minutes. Be it resolved that the minutes of the meeting held on July 11th, 2023 be adopted. Do we have a mover and seconder? We have Councillor Latham will move and Councillor Hentz will second. All in favor? That is carried. Thank you. I would remind members of any disclosures of pecuniary interest and the general nature thereof. Seeing none noted, we have no petitions or presentations this morning, which will move us into the Committee of the Whole. Be it resolved that we do now move into Committee of the Whole Council. Mover and seconder, please. Councillor Noble will move. Councillor Sloan will second. All in favor? And that is carried. Brings us to section six, reports of council, outside boards and staff. 6.1, acting manager of planning, town of Elmer official plan amendment number 2334 Sindenham Street, East Elmer. Good morning, Paul. Good morning, Mr. Warden. Happy to walk council through this application. Um, this is an official plan amendment to the town of Elmer's official plan. It was passed by uh, local council in June of 2023. Um, and it's a, a, a fairly straightforward amendment that's looking to redesignate um, the, the lands um, on Sydenham Street from low density residential to a special policy area, medium density residential three, which will permit the lands to be used for an office at the front of the building um, and on the ground floor and permit a maximum of six residential dwelling units on the remainder of the building. So essentially going from a low density residential designation that would ostensibly permit um, single detached and potentially semi detached homes to a mixed um, a mixed use designation, which would permit a co combination of commercial and residential uses on the property. The proposed application went through the standard um, application process and review process. Uh, Town Council and staff supported the application. We reviewed it um, as per the provincial policy statement, the county official plan, and the town of Elmer's official plan, and are satisfied that it meets all uh, statutory and policy requirements. And as such, we are recommending approval before county council this morning. All right, thank you for that. Does anyone have any questions for Paul this morning on this uh, application? Fairly straightforward then, okay, Jenna. Be it resolved that the Council of the Corporation of the County of Elgin approve official plan amendment number 23 to the official plan of the Town of Elmer and that staff be directed to provide notice of this decision in accordance with the requirements of the Planning Act. Do we have a mover and seconder for that? Councillor Cookett will move, Councillor Noble will second. All in favor? And that is carried, thank you. 6.2, the man, yep. Thank you, Paul. Manager of Administrative Services, Deputy Clerk, approval of fees and charges, 2023. Thank you, Mr. Warden. Through you to members of council, the purpose of this report is to seek council's appro approval for changes to the county's fees and charges bylaw as recommended by the county's management team. Each year, the management team reviews the fees and charges that are levied for administrative activities within each department. The fees collected are to recover costs associated with materials, services, and activities. The changes that are recommended are indicated in red in Schedule A attached to the report. Anything in black remains unchanged from the previous bylaw adopted last year. Specific changes are also described in the report. And with that, I'd be pleased to answer any questions. Thank you for that report. Does anyone have any questions or require any clarification? Councillor Widner? Yes, thank you, Warden. Um, just for clarification, and I guess everything I read is the changes and the updates and the ones in black have been there for a while. Through you, Mr. Warden, that is correct. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Uh, any other questions? One question I have uh, under engineering, uh, you have the electric vehicle charging station fee. My understanding is that uh, administration of the fee has been moved to finance. Should it be reflected accordingly or should it stay with engineering because it is considered facilities? That's just clarification.
Yes, it should be moved to finance. Okay. Yeah. Thank you for that. Thank you. Is there any other questions or points of clarification? No. Okay. Just one point I would ask is that uh, considering that uh, this is a bylaw, I would ask, is it interpreted that this would also be uh, considered policy of the corporation? If I could refer that to the CAO, Mr. Warden. <laughs> Thank you. So I, I think there's a, there might be some uh, layers to the question. Uh, so with respect to the fees, the fees are a policy. It's approved by this council. And for that respect, it is a uh, policy of the corporation. Thank you for that. Okay. <clears throat> I think it's important that uh, the, uh, the organization continue to be on top of escalating costs and trying to recover the fees uh, and apply the benefits principle moving forward. So those who benefit from uh, a particular service or that is offered by the county uh, pays for that service rather than the rate payer. So I think this is reflective in this particular bylaw. Those are just my comments. Jenna, if there are no further questions, I would seek the motion. Be it resolved that the report titled Approval of Fees and Charges 2023, dated July 17th, 2023, from the Manager of Administrative Services, Deputy Clerk, be received and filed, and that the changes to fees and charges identified in Schedule A to the report titled Approval of Fees and Charges 2023, dated July 17th, 2023, are approved approved as amended and imposed to commence on July 25th, 2023. Do we have a mover and seconder for that? Councillor Widner will move. Do we have a seconder? Councillor Cookett will second. All in favor. That is carried. Thank you. Brings us to 6-3 from the Chief Administrative Officer Clerk regarding the Elgant Group Policing Agreement. Morning, Don. Good morning, Warden. Uh, Council, the, this is a, uh, an existing agreement that we have with the OPP and six of our local municipalities. Uh, the agreement is uh, due to expire at the end of this year. Um, I had an opportunity to consult with all of the CAOs of the local municipalities. They were all here of renewing the agreement for two years. The financial information was included in the report. They have a, a rolling four-year average in terms of how the fees are applied, so we're not expecting any significant change in either the levels of service or the fee structure based on what the last four or five years have, have uh, shown us. So the uh, if council adopts this, that would be recommended that this will go back to your respective councils that uh, have services with the OPP, and we'd be asking for your respective councils to consider and approve the, uh, the recommendation to renew the um, services with the OPP for an additional two years. Uh, happy to answer any questions. Thank you for the report, Don. Does anyone have any questions? It would appear that everyone is satisfied. Perfect. Okay, Jenna, please. Be it resolved that the report titled Elgin Group Policing Agreement dated July 25th, 2023 from the Chief Administrative Officer Clerk be received and filed and that the report be sent to the local councils in Bayham, Malahide, Central Elgin, South Hold, Dutton, Dunwich, and West Elgin for their consideration to approve the agreement for an additional two years. Do we have a mover and seconder for that? Councillor Noble will move, and Councillor Sloan will second. All in favor? That's carried. Thank you. Which brings us to Section 7, Council Correspondence, 7.1, Items for Consideration. The first one up is uh, the Municipality of Bayham with a letter requesting County Council support for the Municipality of Bayham's application to the Disaster Mitigation and Adaptation Fund. Does anyone want to speak to that besides me? Yeah, thank you, uh, Warden. Um, Council, the, this was um, addressed in the, some correspondence from myself to members of Council. Um, there was some timing issues with respect to the application. Uh, Council's um, uh, consideration was sought to um, 
allow a letter to go forward from our deputy warden in support of this application. Um, council had previously considered a similar application in the past and it which was supported. Uh, there were no objections from members of council that we uh, uh, adjust the time frame, but with the understanding that it would have to come back to this council meeting for approval by council to make sure that it's formally on the books. So thank you for your consideration with respect to the time frames. that was appreciated. And with that, Your Worship, I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you for that, Don. Does anyone have any questions? Should council choose to support this, uh, we would thank you in advance. Uh, this is a project uh, that at the local level has been on the books for a number of years. Uh, and each year costs keep escalating. We know that in 2021, uh, although the letter alluded to a $20 million project, this is actually closer to a 35 million now. So if we don't act soon, it will be way out of reach. So that's why uh, we're taking another shot at uh, the DMAF program for this. So does anyone have any concerns or questions? And uh, it is just a letter of support. Okay. Jenna, please. Be it resolved that the deputy warden be directed to write a letter of support for the municipality of BAM's application to the disaster mitigation and ad adaptation mm -hmm. fund for the purposes of funding the replacement of stormwater infrastructure in Port Burwell. Do we have a mover for that? Councillor Hentz will move, and it looks like Councillor Latham will second. All in favor? And that is carried, and I thank you. Moving on with section 7.12, letter from Southwestern Public Health regarding the revised budget approval and municipal levy. Who would like to speak to this? Councillor Cookett. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Wyden. Uh, first of all, I would like to support this request and uh, certainly be willing to make a motion to that effect. I'd like to um, provide some background. However, this request grew out of a board discussion, a long board discussion, which began actually on February 9th meeting, which was the budget meeting for the Southwest Public Health Unit. And, and during that discussion, the uh, CEO or the education or the executive director of the Cynthia St. John pointed out that uh, the public health unit was far worse than provincial averages in all kinds of health indicators, which include the use of opioids, smoking, alcohol, mental health, uh, ER visits, uh, you name it, any, any kind of health indicator, the, uh, the public health unit area was uh, far worse than the provincial average. So as I used this word before about the, the uh, members of the board were aghast, I guess, at this kind of situation. And they asked the executive director pr to prepare a report on how to mitigate this problem. And that report came in June. Uh, the result of that report was a request for three quarters of a million dollars of additional funding. Now the budget for the public health unit had already been uh, approved by the board earlier, and this would be in addition to the budget. Uh, it, um, I, I believe it's in the process of being sent to the ministry at this point. The ministry has not responded in terms of uh, whether the original budget and this addition uh, has been approved, and um, uh, we won't know that for a while as far as I, I can gather. The, the only kind of caveat I would have with this is that this, this amount of, uh, of money, three quarters of a million dollars is an annual amount uh, that uh, is recommended for a number of years. The amount that the uh, board is requesting here is a prorated amount for the amount from September uh, through to the end of the year. Uh, so the approval of this uh, will probably generate an equal amount for coming years. But I, I feel it's kind of important, as I, as I mentioned at the meeting, and you know, the phrase is put your money where your mouth is. Um, the, the, the second item I would kind of use as a caveat is, uh, I'm not sure what the other members of, uh, of the public health unit are doing with this request. And I would like somehow to kind of tie our, uh, tie our grant, our, our increased grant uh, to the fact that uh, the other members being 
Oxford and being the city of St. Thomas also agree to this because I don't want to be in the situation where we would be the only uh, member of the, uh, the public health unit that actually provides this money. So I don't know how we handle that in, in the motion, but uh, I, I think we need to do this. I think it's a good move by the public health unit to uh, alleviate the situation. Uh, so I'll leave it up to the rest of council to provide input. Thank you for that, uh, Councillor uh, Cookett. Does anyone have any questions? Yeah, yes, sure. please, Councillor Shear. Oh, well, okay, I'll go to you first, Grant, because you're special and you're on the screen. Yeah, okay, well, thank you, Mr. Warden. Uh, further to uh, Councillor Cookett's uh, comments, um, sitting on the board the last term, this uh, similar uh, presentation came to the previous uh, Board of Health uh, before COVID hit, so about four years ago, um, it at that point hadn't been dealt with because COVID did hit at the same about the same time the report came forward and it was tabled uh, because of because of COVID. Um, but since then, uh, things are, have, have worsened. Obviously, uh, it wasn't as bad of a report last time, but this time is definitely. Um, you can see everything, all the indicators going downwards, which is very concerning uh, for the whole area. So I, I do have concerns with the money uh, aspect coming late uh, in the budget process. I understand how that does happen because the budget was previously approved by the uh, previous board, uh, similar to what we do in Melbourne and our own municipalities. Um, that being said, I think Councilor Cook has a good point that uh, we need to be on board with uh, the rest of our municipalities uh, in this process. Uh, so if we could, I'm not sure how you want to deal with it in a motion, but I think we need to understand what St. Tom the City of St. Thomas and Oxford County are doing as well. Okay, thank you for those comments. Uh, Councilor Shiger. <clears throat> Yes, thank you, Mr. Warden. Um, so I, I don't dispute that uh, we need to do something to address uh, where we are lagging. Um, I just want to ensure that we also look at other indicators such as funding per capita, because it is easy to um, always say that the problem is funding. And we know in healthcare, it is, isn't always the case. So the, my request to the board is that uh, we also publish not only indicators of health, but also funding um, indicators. So that, because um, right now I'm hearing uh, almost a direct correlation between our lagging in, in health indicators and, and that the solution is, you know, a fund. So there's a lack of funding. Um, so let's um, provide both, please. Okay, thank you for those comments. Anyone else? Councilor Noble. <laughs> Hey, uh, I think sometimes it's easy to just throw more money at a problem without really diving into it and finding out how to solve this problem. Right. This is a large problem and they're asking for a lot of money in the in, today and then a lot of money going forward. And um, I'd like to know that there's actually going to be a solution to the, to the challenge and not just us throwing money at it. Okay, thank you for those comments. Uh, Councillor Hens. Thank you, Mr. Warden. Uh, $61,000 is in pocket change. I would like comments from finance on where that would come from between now and the end of the year. Yes. Don, please. Thank you, Warden. Uh, we had anticipated the question. I spoke with our treasurer about this request. Um, as Councillor Cookett had, had referred to in his opening remarks, this was raised on in February. Uh, we had, did have an opportunity to have that uh, considered during the budget and our treasurer had um, built in some provisions for an additional cost. There's no, not going to be any adjustment required for the budget, but there was um, recognized in the discussion that there was going to be some additional work being done regarding some of these issues, that there was a um, an additional buffer put into the public health budget. So that is available and uh, our treasurer assures me that, that there's not going to be any impact to any other services or the budget requirements. Okay. Anyone else? Yes, uh, Nick. Thank you, Warden. Uh, so I just want council to have some clarity on it because the wording in the letter, I maybe read a bit differently than council. So 
the reference towards the end in the last large paragraph is an increase to the uh, total board of health levy, which is a statutory obligation to pay. So the way this letter is framed, I, I don't know that it's actually a request uh, for council to approve an additional amount so much as it is a request for council to send the money to them. Yep. Um, it, and I, I can go into the weeds if we want to on how the Health Promotion Protection Act works, but I just want, I just want to frame the discussion for you that my reading is that they are not asking for a yay or a nay, they're just asking for the money because they have decided to spend it. Um, and there are mechanics for how that works, but I just wanted to have that piece of information for council before you continue your discussion. Thank you for that clarification, Nick, and that would be my understanding as well. Uh, but I think there's some valid points that have been identified around the table that uh, perhaps we could request uh, some of those metrics that, uh, as Councillor Shiger is pointing out, give us a, a per capita dollar of what this is and what it looks like. Uh, and I think uh, Councillor Cook had pointed out as well that uh, though we're expecting or hoping that the province would fund its share, there is an un, you know, an, an, there's a question out there. If they don't, then are they coming back for additional funding from the county uh, and the city and uh, the county of Oxford? See what I'm getting at. There's a, there's a, there's a, there could be some larger pieces coming at us, perhaps. And keep in mind that uh, from a, a budget for uh, picture going forward, it's 183, 184 thousand dollars already on next year's budget is what it's implying. Uh, what have I missed? Have I captured kind of the discussion out there? Mr. Warden? Okay, yep, Councillor jo uh, Deputy Warden Jones, sorry. Yeah. Yes, thank you, no problem. Um, yeah, it's, uh, it's more of a, I su su suggest uh, this is what we want and <laughs> it's not, it's not uh, whether we, and defer or say no to it. That is, uh, it is a levy. I do agree with Councillor Chiguer's comment that we should have something that shows us what it is per capita. That, that would be a, a very good metric to have uh, compared to our neighbors. Um, but at, at, at this point, uh, it is a request for money that I don't think we can turn and say no to. Yeah, thank you for those comments. Yep, Don, thank, please. Thank you. If I could just seek some clarity from council with the way the motion has been drafted, we, we are going to add the piece about the uh, County of Oxford and uh, St. Thomas uh, paying their portion of the levy, but I would need some direction if you want us to do anything else with respect to the metrics component that Councillor Jaguer raised, or whether that uh, request will be taken forward by uh, Councillor Cookett and Deputy Warden Jones as members of the committee and uh, I know they have a, a chance to sit at the table. Um, if I could offer one other piece, when, when this letter was received, I did contact the Southwest Public Health Unit and express concern that this is the first time I've ever seen um, an additional levy in the middle of the year, uh, not to coincide with the budget process. So it makes it difficult. Now, to, to be fair, they did raise some of these questions in February, as Councillor Cook had talked about, but um, having that come in the middle of the year, if our budget had not had the buffer in it that was anticipating some requests, then, then it puts an increased onus on the taxpayer. So uh, that concern was raised and it was uh, well received, I think. So clarification, please, with respect to anything on the metrics. Thank you. Thank you for that, Don. Councillor Cookett. Uh, ju just a further comment, uh, Mr. Warden. You can rest assured that um, the board and myself and probably the deputy warden as well we can switch gear and uh and ask uh what would satisfy your needs uh it seems to me if it were me i would like to have something included in the motion to at least request a, uh, a, a and uh, at the same time would hope that our, our representatives at Southwest Public Health would push the issue that uh, we can see these kinds of metrics. Thank you, Mr. Warden. I, I would agree that I think having it in writing uh, as part of the motion that um, the county requests that financial metrics be provided to the board mm -hmm. and that the board um, shares that information with uh, council. At Thank first you for opportunity. that.
Okay, we're just having a brief pause while uh, we get some wordsmithing done here. Okay. If there is nothing further uh, from council members, then uh, Jenna, please read the motion. Be it resolved that the county remit payment of $15,313.50 per month beginning September 1st, 2023 for a total of $61,254 to cover the county's portion of the additional levy as requested by the Southwestern Public Health Board of Health provided the county of Oxford and the city of St. Thomas agree to their respective levies and that additional information be requested from the Board of Health regarding health indicator metrics to be shared with County Council. Okay. Having heard the motion, is someone willing to move? Councilor Cookett will move and second that motion. Councilor Hentz will uh, second. All in favor? Three, four, five. And any opposed? It is carried, thank you. Moving on to section 7.1.3, letter from the uh, St. Thomas Elgin General Hospital Foundation, the interim executive director requesting to schedule a delegation to county council on October the 10th, 2023, and inviting counselors to a tour of the hospital's diagnostic imaging suite in September. Who would like to speak to that one? Don, thank you. Yeah. For, for the benefit of those listening, uh, the letter that was shared in the information package uh, indicated that the um, there would be a request forthcoming, uh, likely in October, November, for approximately two point five million dollars for to support their diagnostic imaging requests, uh, specifically um, uh, MRI machine, I believe. And there is a request to invite County Council to. Uh, I tour the facility to give you an opportunity to ask questions, to consider what benefits would be um, accruing to our community should the um, uh, diagnostic equipment be approved. So this is an opportunity for council to uh, gain some increased understanding of why the needs there and what the benefits would be to the community before they're asked to consider the uh, request for funding. All right, thank you for that. Questions, concerns? I would assume it is always better to have more information uh, than less uh, when we come down to making that decision, uh, financial decision, should we be asked. So I don't, um, I personally, I don't, I don't see a reason why we wouldn't uh, entertain a delegation from them. And if we have an opportunity to tour the diagnostic suite, I think it would be educational as well. Unless there are any concerns uh, or questions, Jenna, please. Be it resolved that council support the request from the St. Thomas Elgin General Hospital and the St. Thomas Elgin General Hospital Foundation to provide a delegation to council on October 10th, 2023, and that staff be directed to coordinate a tour for county council of the STEG Diagnostic Imaging Suite for September 2023. Okay, do we have a mover and a seconder for that? Councillor Latham will move. Councillor Noble will second. All in favor? That's carried, thank you. 7.1.4, letter from the Ministry of Natural Resources and Forestry regarding the Legacy Oil and Gas Wells Municipal Transfer Payment Program. Yes. Don, I believe this one's yours. Thank you, Warden. Um, the Ministry of Natural Resources and Forestry has uh, identified that there are uh, approximately 5,000 or over 5,000 legacy gas wells in southwestern Ontario. So they stretch from Niagara to Windsor to Sarnia and well into Lake Erie. Um, there has been some recent experiences, including in our community, where there have been uh, gas leaks that have caused uh, concerns to uh, public health, and it's required a fair bit of remediation. Um, the ministry has uh, identified $7.5 million of funding over a three-year period to fund local communities to try and look at ways that they can either mitigate or prepare for 
uh, response should there be a, uh, an outbreak in their own community or a release in their own community. Um, I had an opportunity to review the offer with your uh, respective CAOs when we met on Friday of last week. Um, there was general interest. Um, even those fortunate enough to live in Elmer, who apparently has no identified legacy wells, everybody was interested in seeing if we could take advantage of the opportunity to prepare for. Uh, sometimes the wells are hidden and they're not known about. So everybody stands to benefit within the county. Uh, we're, we're eligible for approximately $280,000 worth of funding. Uh, the caveat is that there's some tight timelines. We have to provide a proposal by um, mid-September and the work has to be completed by the end of March. Uh, and there's a few other timelines that were included in the, the letter that was included with the council package. But the intent would be that we try and move forward with uh, uh, some opportunities to benefit all of us to uh, reduce the risks or to prepare for uh, a potential uh, uh, release. So with that, I'm happy to answer any questions. I had the unfortunate experience of having lived with one of these in uh, my previous employment in Chatham Kent. So I can tell you that it, it can be extraordinarily disruptive. It happens in a, uh, any community, a part of our community, but if it happens in a, an area where there's a settlement, uh, then it, it can be a major threat and uh, disruption. So thank you. Thank you for that, Don. Does anyone have any questions? Councilor Scott. Through you, Warden, to Mr. Shropshire, we had a, actually a map at one point that showed the area. Is that available? Yes, it is. We'll commit to sharing that with all the council. There was a uh, there's a map that it looks like it's, you know, uh, several hundred blue dots that are in our community. And when I when I got the message back from my CEO colleague in Elmer, uh, he said, uh, you know, thankfully we have none. I, I sent him back a copy of the map with the words "Amen." Uh, it, it is uh, extraordinary to see how many there are. But happy to share that with you. And uh, I think given that we've also got a number of people. Uh, considering development in their respective communities, some of the growth plans that you know have been entertained, uh, making sure that we don't have any gas wells on any of the properties that are considering being for development is also something we might want to consider as part of our, our application process. Thank you. Thank you. Councilor Hens. Thank you, Mr. Warden. Um, I did attend one of these meetings in Chatham and it opened my eyes and I'm from a municipality that has a hundreds of legacy oil and gas wells. I also attended Ryan Brown's meeting that was held here, and he was left in charge of that at uh, Chatham-Kent. Um, I'm very worried about this issue. So my question is for Don, would this be coordinated at the county level and participation from municipalities? Yes, and all of the uh, CAOs were quite anxious to uh, uh, lean into this as an issue and to take part. So it would definitely be coordinated. And, and I'd, I'd go a step further. I've tried to reach out to some of our neighbors uh, with the hopes that, you know, if they're also getting in that range of $280,000, maybe we could do some complimentary activities. Uh, maybe somebody uses the money to develop a training program. Maybe somebody else looks into gas monitoring. I mean, there may be some ways to leverage some of the funding available. So early days, yeah, we just got the application and discussion last week. Um, but yes, definitely the CAOs are interested in participating um, in the process. Thanks. Thank you. Councilor Shiger. Thank you, Mr. Warden. Um, yes, so a few questions. Is this funding available only to upper tier? So the, uh, the quick answer is upper tiers receive the request for funding. The uh, Targeted audience are local or uh, are rural municipalities in southwestern Ontario that have the highest risk. So it doesn't make any sense for us to look at something that's just going to benefit a, an upper tier. It's clearly uh, from an emergency response perspective and, and mitigation. These are things that are going to uh, be directly impacting people at our local municipalities. So the, their participation and engagement in this is essential for any sort of uh, expected you know positive outcome i can say thank you for as a follow-up i'm just curious what how they came up with two hundred eighty thousand, and and 
what that represents is is this 50 percent of the potential cost like do we have an estimate of what this initiative would cost is it 100 percent, 50 percent, maybe 10 percent? like what would we be actually looking into doing and and do you divvy up per number of wells so if one municipality has 100 and the other one has five i'm just it, it to me it lacked a bit of context to understand the bigger picture i don't have a definitive answer for you uh, I can tell you based on what the expenses were like uh, responding to the well in Wheatley, it was well over $10 million. Uh, the province picked up some of that. There were other expenses that the municipality picked up. Um, I think $280,000 is it's a nice start. We're not expected necessarily to put any money on the table to do matching funding, whatever. It's a complete grant. Um, so I think what what I would be suggesting to the, the team based on that experience is we look at something that could benefit all of the different communities rather than focus on say just Malahide or just uh, Central Elgin. I, I think some, some broader application would be helpful on the front end, uh, recognizing this is nowhere near going to hit all of the, the needs that you'd have if there was going to be an event. Um, and at $7.5 million was over three years uh, for all of Southwest Ontario. So it's a nice start, but a lot of work to do yet. Councillor Latham. I was just saying that West Elgin I was just saying that West Elgin has got a tremendous amount of gas and oil wells. And if you just take a ride, it's a rural municipality. Just take a ride around the back roads and they're in nearly every field in some areas. Likewise, uh, BAM has its fair share. Uh, when we were dealing with MTAG on the uh, one of the tax issues, uh, the assessed value of infrastructure in BAM was comparable to the entire county of Norfolk. So yeah, there's, there's a lot of wells out there and there are some legacy wells and we have had experience with a blowout in the Big Otter uh, a few years back and uh, it is... Uh, it is an interesting proposition when you don't have uh, the emergency response training that they do in Western Canada. And uh, you certainly rely on the, the province to help you through this. But this uh, is an opportunity to help build uh, at least an awareness, perhaps identify where they are, whatever, uh, uh, develop some kind of an emergency response plan, if I understand it correctly. It, it, it may be the plan. It may be some part of a plan. It could be training. It could be equipment. I, I, we have not, I don't want to pretend that we've actually made any sort of decisions on that respect. We have a, a plan, but right now I can tell you for almost every municipality in the province of Ontario, the emergency plan would mean moving people away from the source of the gas in sufficient distance so that they're not going to be, uh, their health wouldn't be compromised. Uh, the, the gas can be a, a number of things, but hydrogen sulfide and methane are the two most prominent in this region. And there are thankfully models that you can use to determine how far back they have to go. But that's really the extent of the training that our fire services would have is they call a number with Canutech, that's a, a federal agency that would actually uh, give them advice and say, based on the conditions that you're experiencing today, this is how far back they have to move. And then our people move people back they don't have any training at all to go in and try and shut down the uh, gas. It's, it's quite extraordinary. So we really need to look at saying how, how does all levels of government come to the table? And right now the legislation is um, very unclear as to who's going to actually take that responsibility. The ultimate responsibility asks, actually rests with the property owner. And you can imagine what that would be like for a private property owner that has a gas well on it and they have a, a, have a leak you know, gigantic burden. So some level of government uh, engagement and support would uh, would definitely be called upon if we uh, we had a leak in our community. Thank you for that. Any additional questions? Okay, Jenna? You have resolved that staff be directed to work with Elgin's local municipal partners to prepare a submission package to the Ministry of Natural Resources and Forestry Legacy Oil and Gas Wells Municipal Transfer Payment Program. Do we have a mover and seconder, please? Councillor Latham will move. Councillor Hentz will second. All in favor? There. 
Then it's carried. Thank you. 7.2 items for information, the consent agenda, 7.2.1, <clears throat> notice of public information center one and study design report review period, highway four widening and proposed Talbotville bypass, highway, highway three twinning preliminary design, detailed design and class environmental assessment study. It's in the package. Does anyone wish to speak to it? Uh, I would note that uh, on the news last night, it identified that they were going to be covering it tonight on the local news. So catch the news at six. And I would recommend uh, if you're available, attend the open house and find out, uh, get some more details. Okay. Be it resolved that correspondence item number 7.2.1 be received and filed. Mover and seconder, please. Councillor Noble. Seconded by Councillor Sloan. All in favor? That's carried. Thank you. Brings us down to section eight other business. Are there any statements, inquiries, or members by council? Although I said I wouldn't do it, I'm going to do it anyway. A happy belated birthday, uh, Councillor Sloan. Very kind. 49 again. <laughs> 8.2, notice of motion. And 8.3, matters of urgency. Councilor Widner. Yes, thank you, Warden. Uh, against the council's consideration, I'd like to bring forward for closed session, have a discussion involving an identifiable individual. We can have a discussion under closed session. I appreciate that. Councilor Sloan. Uh, Warden, pardon me for interrupting, but the, the motion that went forward, uh, just to clarify, my understanding is that you were seeking legal advice on that issue. That's one of the reasons for bringing in the close. Thank you. We'll add that to the, the motion. Be it resolved that we do now proceed into closed meeting session in accordance with the Municipal Act to discuss the following matters under Municipal Act Section 239.2. Close meeting item number one, close meeting minutes, July 11th, 2023. Close meeting item number two, boundary adjustment matter, section 239.2H. And close meeting item number three, section 239.2B and F. Do we have a mover and seconder for that motion? Councillor Noble? Councillor Latham? All in favor? Okay. That's carried. Thank you. So we'll wait till we go offline. Welcome back. We will now entertain the motion to rise and report. Be it resolved that we do now rise and report. Mover and seconder. Councillor Sloan. Councillor Noble will second. All in favor? That's carried. Close meeting item number one. Be it resolved that the closed meeting minutes from the July 11th, 2023 meeting be adopted. Over and seconder, please. Councillor Noble will move. Councillor Sloan will second. All in favor? That's carried. Closed meeting item number two. Be it resolved that the confidential report from Ward and Ketchabaw be received for information. Over and seconder, please. 
Councillor Sloan, Councillor Noble, all in favor? And that's carried. Close meeting item number three. Be it resolved that no further action be taken. Mover and seconder. Councillor Hentz and Councillor Jaguer, all in favor? That's carried. Motion to adopt recommendations from the Committee of the Whole. Be it resolved that we do now adopt recommendations of the Committee of the Whole. I think I saw uh, Councillor Sloan moving that. Councillor Noble will second. All in favor? That is carried. Uh, by consideration of the bylaws, bylaw number 23-33, fees and charges. Be it a first, second, and third read of bylaw number 23-33, being a bylaw to provide a schedule of services and activities subject to fees and charges by the County of Elgin and to repeal bylaw number 22-26 as amended, and I'll note that the amendment would be moving the EV charger fee from engineering to finance. Mover and seconder, please. Councillor Sloan, Councillor Latham will second. All in favor? That's carried. Bylaw number 2334, the confirmation bylaw. Be it a first, second, and third read of bylaw number 23-34, being a bylaw to confirm proceedings of the Municipal Council of the Corporation of the County of Elgin at the July 25th, 2023 meeting. Mover and seconder, please. Up, oh, Councillor Deputy Warden Jones. Get him on the record. Seconded by Councillor Noble. Thank you for that. All in favor? That's carried. Which brings us to the adjournment motion. Be it resolved that we do now adjourn at 10.50 a.m. to meet again on August 8th, 2023 at 9 o'clock a.m. Councillor Widner will move. And uh, did I, Councillor Sloan, all in favor? That is carried. Thank you for joining us this morning. We certainly appreciate it.